Alright, in this episode we break down Takahiro Norimoto's pitching mechanics. Talk about rehabbing after a broken leg. Porcio Ryan Hill here at the At Top Velocity Hashtag Pitcher Tip Show, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, At Top Velocity Hashtag Pitcher Tip. It just mumbles together, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't it's, think it's, a like it. it's a lot to say. People know what you're saying. Yeah, right? Instagram, it's just Snapchat, pitching tips. Facebook, social media. Top Velocity at social, said social media. That's yeah, the one he's at. Pitching tips, uh, hitting tips, any tips on pitching, baseball, Most hitting, baseball tips. Anything. Maybe on... Um, Maybe we shouldn't go too far, though. Maybe we, we could push too far into, like, you know, you want me, we're not life coaches. <laughs> like, we're not life coaches. We tips. could be life coaches. You want to just go into that? I mean, hashtag I'm life coach. Dot, have, hashtag life coach? Yeah. Okay. Well, bring me, me RTPT at hashtag life coach dot org. <laughs> Is that how those work? Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's <laughs> how those things are put together. Yeah, he's, he's, he's not even on uh, Instagram. Well, he's slightly on Instagram. We're, they, like, it's in the process okay, that so, we just talked about. Yeah, so he's going to be on Instagram under Top Velocity um, PT, PT. Something around that. Um, life Coach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so it's been pretty crazy around here. We haven't stopped working. I've just been working, working, working. We're going to go up to the ASMI Baseball and Injuries course this weekend. I'm pretty excited about yeah. that. You're coming too. Yeah. And uh, get the latest and most updated. Uh, Concept. Yeah, talk to some big wigs, man. Okay. And then we're uh, pretty excited. Actually, we can say this: Chris Medlin um, signed a minor league contract with the yeah. Arizona Diamondbacks. Pretty excited about that. Um, David Arzma is yet to tell us if he's gonna be a player or a front office guy this year. I haven't heard if it's official. I got, I got theories. Yeah, I know. Well, let's not go into that. <laughs> and we've got uh, Cody Hall, Tampa Rays, and. Al Hannah Miller's working hard. He's he's we were I was seeing he's got some issues to in his biomechanics that we need to fix to get him to where he needs to be and he's got some teams that would probably give him a chance in affiliated ball, so I'm excited. A lot going on, camps. If you haven't booked your camps, we're trying to get more housing. We've we've been so full so full with housing, we're trying to get more housing because we have a lot of guys wanting to come. The summer hasn't even started, and that's usually when they all want to come. So guys, if you want housing, go to Top Velocity House on Instagram, DM them. Uh, Stevie G's working on one. I'm gonna start working on housing. Uh, it seems to be. It just seems like a housing. good investment. Yeah, that we're gonna do. So uh, that's that's what's going on around here. We got a good show today. Here we okay. go. Baseball Man 99 commented, Brent, can you break down Takahiro Norimoto pitching mechanics? All right, Takahiro Norimoto, RT. So he is the he's the ace for the Rakuten Golden Eagles. Um, you know, smaller guy, 5'10", weighs somewhere between like 107, 170, 180 pounds. Um, 27 years old, sits in the, the mid to low 90s, but is touched, uh, touched into like 97, depending on what source you look at with it. Um, so yeah, he's kind of always been attached at the hip with uh, Otani, he just signed with the, the Angels. I think they were drafted same year, same type of deal. So um, that's our guy, that's who we're looking at. Okay, so little guy. Let's walk him through his mechanics here. This is in 14, though, so not no, don't know what has changed, but we'll see. So, you know, this is would be your drop and drive, this right? A, this seems like a drop and drive. Yeah. Right. So this is a guy. He's squatting and extending. You know, obviously, I don't like this because I want momentum when I peak flexion. When I hit peak flexion, I want to get out of it. You know, stretch shortening, you don't want to stretch a muscle and then hold it for a while. You want to stretch it and fire it. You, you know, if you hold it for a while, it starts to lose energy. Um, so let's see what he does. So then from here, he starts to go. He starts to more than likely push at this point. Uh, gets his momentum going. And he, here's the thing, though. It's like 
Ah, it's a tough one. I, you know, I feel like a lot of Japanese baseball, um, in their lower half, they coach a more rotational approach. Um, I guess I would say, I, you know, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting how it's it's probably not just rotational. Obviously, it's it's a combination of linear to rotational, but definitely more on the rotational side. So this is where I get critical mm -hmm. of it. I like it, the fact that they do try to get momentum uh, and, and they do understand the concepts of more than likely hip to shoulder separation. But I'll show you where it just gets too rotational. So, so did you, I mean, if you're gonna have, like you have your drop and drive and then your stand tall fall kind of guys, you would rather come with this concept? This is like a, you, yeah, you could say drop and drive, but the point is, is like they're gonna cut the drive off and just rotate. So okay. it's a little bit different than drop oh, and drive at this happens. point. So as he starts to go forward, he's starting to push here. So here would be his drive right there. Mm -hmm. And then they they go into big internal rotation uh, on the front legs. So you see a lot of their guys will really internally rotate. Th that's fine with the front leg, but the problem is the lift leg here is extended and it's about to fly out in front of the body. So what they do is to hold it back, they instantly rotate it. Mm -hmm. okay, so I don't like working against momentum. So it's like, if everything's going, I want it to go. I don't want it to go and then try to hold it back. Hold back on it. Right. So, you know, it's like, it's weird seeing a guy going from an extended leg position to an internally rotated position, right? Um, I would have rather seen him in an extended leg position and then opened up late in the movement. So he had to, okay. he had to kind of tuck and inside rotate and hold because everything was going too early. Why was everything going too early? Because when he squats, now what's going to move him forward is he's going to have to drive. So he, that means he's initiating his drive when his force vector is up. So that means the, the initiation of the drive is just very early. So in that early drive, he has to work really hard to now not let everything go fly open. So he, he tucks and internally rotates the lift leg in a way that, that kind of kills that energy. So that's why from here, they now they have to become rotators. <clears throat> so now it's just rotation. It's, nope. it's open front knee, turn down back knee, and, and into front foot strike. It, and it's, Atani does it too. Atani gets down and loaded and he doesn't have a lot of linear power out of that back leg. So he mm -hmm. gets very rotational. So it's like, I just, I don't, Here's the thing, it's like we want to use linear and rotation together and this is them actually separating the movements. Watch. So him going into getting into that internal rotation up here, right into there. So it also kind of helps create that torque right there, right? So to kind of unwind and create a rotational moment yeah. as well, right? Right, but the point is, is they're separating them as opposed to combining them. So okay. You're, so you have two power movements. You have the linear movement, which would be the push that way, and then you have the rotational movement, and that's in the hips, and you have the same thing in the trunk. With them, I like to combine them together. So I like the hips going forward down the same rate, where the back leg <laughs> drives to power rotation. Mm -hmm. So it's like rotation and drive, or, ex or the linear power, are actually combining together to power the stride. That would be ideal, right? It's, they do it, they're doing a little different. They're coming down, they're driving, and now the driving's over, and then now they're rotating. They're rotating. So they're separate from each other. It's, it's drive, it's like two drives dumps, now rotate, as opposed to drive and rotate, right? Yeah. So I, I, that's the only thing that I, I've seen a lot of Japanese, more maybe just overall Asian pitchers, is they want to separate these in their strides and it gets herky-jerky and it's not efficient. And like with Atani, you know, I called out Atani's UCL problem because his hips are late, because he doesn't get a lot of linear power out of his hips. It's, so he lands with his hips closed and then he starts pushing his elbow forward. Is Tanaka like that? Keep it broken down. Tanaka, Tanaka was well? like that. Tanaka's the same the thing. UCL type deal. Yep. And I said the same thing about you Tanaka. Darvish. And I said the TJ. same thing about you, Darvish. I called Tanaka. Darvish and um, Otani, because they, they were all landing with their hips closed um, and and they were pushing their elbows. Their elbows were pushing in front of their face where, where those, you know, the forces stay on the elbow longer because it delays pronation. So the same thing's <laughs> happening here. So now he's hitting front foot, okay? So he's hitting front foot, hips. So right when he touches down right here, okay? Like that. He's, He's open, slightly open, but not enough. We want to get the hip through. 
So the hip gets through probably right there. And now look, everything's already going forward. So we would want the chin behind belt buckle. So this is gone early. Why is this going early? Because the hip's late. If the hip's late, so when we land, the trunk's gonna go. See, everything's perfect. But the point is the hips are late. So now everything's gonna go. So now you have the chin going and you have the hip going. So they're, they're moving together. So if we go back and forth from here to there, we're gonna see the chin and back hip moving together. See it? So we're seeing the, the chin and the hip moving together. They're just doing this. When they should be doing, they should be landing like this and then the trunk goes. Landing hips up, then the trunk goes. So now we have, a, we have this a little bit in sync here, right? You can see it. The hip to shoulder separation is a little synced up. That's why he's trying to literally hold everything back because everything's to going together. Forward. He's like, oh crap, it's all going together. I'm gonna try to keep it back. But in a way that helps keep it back. But it's just, it's, it's awkward. It's herky-jerky, right? It's not sequenced that well. The arm abducts and lays back, okay? I don't see him pushing the arm. You know, I would say not too bad, maybe. Okay. Maybe a little bit, maybe not. So I think, here's the thing, it worked. It worked for him because he was able to keep the trunk in such extension right there. Yeah, I mean, you look at that right there, that's, that's a lot of extension coming back. Yeah. That's a lot of thoracic mobility that he's getting through there. So when you have poor hip to shoulder separation because your hips are late, okay? then you're gonna overcompensate an extension to once again delay the end of the chain and let the energy come up. But he, he makes it happen, so here's the thing, he's making it happen, but barely. You know, that, that drop in the initial movement, that drop was caused him to drive early, and then he had to d try to come rotation. hold his front side, and then, he, then it, once his energy had ran out, then he tried to rotate, then it caused his hips to not drive through because there wasn't a combination of linear to rotational power. So then his hips and trunk kind of synced up. So then he had to overextend yeah. so his arm didn't go early. So he really kind of saves himself with the mobility that he has in the back. If but, he, yeah. but what happens if he, st if he starts losing that, right? Then what happens if that starts to tighten up on him, then all of a sudden the arm starts coming forward and he'll start pushing most likely. Yeah, and he's not even really using his front leg. So he's, no. he's, he's probably not able to use his front leg because you know, by the time his hips opened where that front leg wants to start. So you're not going to get this front leg to kick back when your hips are closed. Because right now, if, his, if this kicked back, it would literally push him backwards. Mm -hmm. You want rotation to be going when you extend because it would push this hip back, which would mm -hmm. actually accelerate that hip forward and push the trunk forward. Yep. So because his hips are late, his trunk got out early or got out before the hips got out. And then because of that, the front leg didn't really have the time to get into extension. So you don't even see the front leg extension. So it's like, here's the thing, this guy's throwing 97, maybe he does some of these things better when he's throwing harder. But say that was 95, I mean, it's like this guy could throw even harder if he, if he cleaned this up. But same thing too, I think a lot of things you clean up here would, would be for arm health or to prevent injury down the road. Mm -hmm. But leaving that front leg like that and not actually getting the front leg active means he, this guy could throw harder, which is impressive. So I think this guy's a good athlete. He just got some herky-jerkiness in there, which to me is just saying that he doesn't sequence the chain that efficiently. And there's a lot of things he needs to clean up. I agree. But I wouldn't. I agree, but I mean, he's throwing, he's throwing as hard as he is. I think that he's just... Yeah, he needs to sequence things better in a sense of not being a circuit jacket, but the way that he does it right now, I think his, his muscle pattern understands that. So I think he's maximizing what he has available to him. It's just I don't think he's using everything that could be available. Does that make sense? Yeah, but I do get nervous when I see, even though it's he's making it work, when I see herky-jerky because it's like if one day he gets his thoracic mobility tightens up, Sleeps or, wrong that day. Yeah, or if he's not driving that day, then all of a sudden all this goes to crap really yeah. fast. So I, I would I would not want to like if I if I had him, I would want to always try to get this uh, more efficient. So okay, cool. Another question. Nate Sayer commented, Brent, I broke my tibia fibula and have had bad hip and ankle mobility in the back leg since. I used to throw very hard. Now obviously I don't. Anything I should do? So Nate, good question. What do you got for him, RT? So 
let's first talk about what Nate said. So Nate broke his uh, tibia and fibula, so the bones in the, the lower half of the leg. Um, now he's saying has ankle mobility issues, hip mobility issues um, on, the, on the back leg, so on that drive leg. Just kind of asking for help. The big thing is, is yeah, when you have that type of break a, tra break, a traumatic injury like that, and you're offloaded, you're not doing any kind of movement, you're allowing the healing process to occur, those joints tend to contract up and get tight and get hypomobile. And, you know, we mentioned it to anybody that comes into the camp, or I think we said it a few times on here, is that you have to have that mobility as a prerequisite for doing any of your lifting or any of your throwing type of stuff. So the biggest thing for you is to, you have to get that mobility. Because it doesn't matter if you're trying, you can strengthen, 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 but if you don't have the mobility to get into the correct positions, then you're strengthening a dysfunction and it's not gonna really help you that much anyways. Um, my suggestions to you are to one, either find a physical therapist around you, um, or like a mobility coach, something like that, that can really start at the, start at the floor, start at the ankle. Make sure that you have the mobility in the ankle and then start waking, working your way up into the chain. Um, you can also go find, we've got a mobility program through topvelocity.net slash ML. M-O-B, M-O-B. M-O-B. Um, and do that. Go through that and as we kind of update that, if you've got the program, then we'll, you know, we'll get you the updated version of it as we go. But, but for you, um, yeah, you've got to start getting that motion back before you can expect probably any gains coming back with uh with the you lost probably game. started to favor that leg by sh putting more of your weight on your other oh, leg yeah. and you probably haven't recorrected that um you know motor skill yeah or motor control you know, your, your motor that's control is probably you walking on the other side so that's a great point you know your body's naturally gonna consciously or subconsciously start trying to adjust and protect itself and if you've had a, a joint that's already been damaged whether you're thinking about it or not, you're probably starting to lean towards that other side and favor it. So, well, a great example. We had Barry Zito in here, and we were doing the, the evaluations, and I had him jump, and he jumped. You know, it was really poor because he was here to gain speed. He jumped 26 inches, and I don't know. I think when we saw him jump, he kept favoring one side because we do a two-legged jump, and we asked him to jump each single each leg, and his drive leg jumped six inches lower than his his uh, right leg and yeah. he didn't know that so I, w I went up to him and said had you injured yourself he said yeah I had a really bad ankle sprain a couple of years ago and I was like a couple of years ago it just showed how in two years he hadn't even you know, basically shifted back to the other leg yeah or the leg that he had and especially like that's a great point too like guys that have like chronic ankle sprains kind of stuff once you get it and you cut into that that proprioceptive input coming back like you mentioned that mm -hmm. neuromuscular control like that, that stability takes a hit. And for guys that have chronic ankle sprains kind of stuff, that's something that's gonna be a recurring risk for you is continuing to sprain that ankle, sprain that ankle. And, and it's so that. common, actually. It's very common yeah. with guys that lose velocity like Nate has. You know, they, they injure the drive leg mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden they don't throw hard and then you see their video. And they wanna get off of it. They wanna get off of it. They don't wanna yeah. put pressure on it. They want to, and that's, is that was your engine. Now you're using less of your engine. Now you throw less as hard. Plus, you wind up having an injury, arm injury, because now your arm's overcompensating. So mm -hmm. it's a nightmare. It, it is. It's a nightmare when you sprain or break the lower extremities because it's the beginning of the chain, mm -hmm. and then everything just starts shifting and overcompensating, yeah. and that can really disrupt your your mechanics. Yeah. So find find someone to to start looking at your mobility, brother, um, and get that taken care of. Cool, that's a good question. Let us know about your progress. Um, if you have a question, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, at Top Velocity, hashtag pitch tips, hashtag basal tips, ask your question, we'll answer on the show.